Uh, I'm Santiago Borio from uh, IDEMS International. I'm joining me is uh, David Stern as well, who will be co-presenting with me. Uh, we have been working uh, with JSX Graph uh, and Stack for uh, quite some time. And uh, we worked on a number of uh, applications for areas of mathematics, and we chose to focus our presentation on statistics because it's an area that we found particularly challenging, and, and we thought it would be interesting to uh, share the work we've done uh, so far in, in regards to this. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pass on to David, who will uh, talk a bit about our motivations and the context for the statistics. Thank you, Santiago. Um, and a big part of this from the statistics education perspective um, for us has been about scalability. Um, where we do a lot of work supporting um, colleagues in African universities who have large numbers of students and who, um, uh, where the technology access isn't great and they're there's a lot of good innovations which are out there, but which they simply don't have access to because the technology doesn't match what their students can access. And so um, I'd like to start by sort of mentioning CAST, which is uh, Computer Assisted Statistics Textbooks. This has come out of New Zealand. It's one of the many great innovations in statistics education to have come out of New Zealand. Um, New Zealand in statistics education is way ahead of pretty much anywhere else. They have um, statistics introduced the from the first year of primary right the way schooling um, and uh, and in in all that time they never see your traditional hypothesis testing they go through um, other methods which mean that people come out with a deeper understanding of statistical processes so they include bootstrapping and all sorts of other methods which mean that actually the understanding you get about working with data is sort of built up. So there's a really incredible amount of work which has happened in New Zealand in statistics education from school right the way through. And <clears throat> cast in this had these, has these amazing exercises which um, James and, and others who we've been working with have been using in Kenya. But they weren't accessible because um, without computer labs, actually they weren't working on mobile phones. And so although we have colleagues who have managed to use these in certain contexts, which have led to 20% increases in average student marks on a, uh, a separate examined uh, course, where, which was shown to be independent of teacher and, um, and solid across, uh, I think, four different cohorts. Um, but, uh, but we couldn't get them to students. And uh, James and many of his colleagues um, uh, are teaching huge classes. He has a descriptive stats course which has been taught to over a thousand students, no TAs, um, and of course, no computer labs, which they can go to anything like this. And, and so it's really, really challenging environments. Um, however, the students do tend to have smartphones. And one of the things that um, we've been finding is that Stack through Moodle um, is accessible to students through smartphones and, um, and that JSX Graph means that we can actually um, integrate in statistical components, as I think you'll see, in rather interesting ways. And so really that's been one of the big motivators. And the second motivation is the statistical problem solving course. And this is part of an initiative of the World Statistics Society who are supporting the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences in its master's program in mathematical sciences. They've been supporting it to really strengthen the statistical component of that master's. And um, as part of that, we've been developing what is the introductory course, statistical problem solving, where we take in students, some of which have full degrees in statistics and some of whom have done math degrees with no statistics or engineering, where they don't have any statistics. And we take that diverse group of students and we try to give them a, an introduction to statistical problem solving in a way which they can all embrace and be challenged by, um, but which is also enabling some of them who don't have a background in statistics to catch up with some of the basic concepts. And, 
just to give you an idea, um, many of the things that they get wrong are simple ideas about standard deviation. Even mean and median, what we've just saw in the previous talk, these ideas, there were students who are in that master's program who haven't understood that. And so what we've been doing is using these sort of stat questions um, to enable them to have some mastery learning alongside the sort of the problem solving course itself. And so they're actually building up their statistical understanding while they're also um, doing the statistical problem solving course. And that's really the background to the different exercises you'll see. I'll just say one last thing, which um, Santiago hinted at, which is that this is part of a much bigger initiative um, of supporting particularly African lecturers, but also African schools um, in, uh, in, in having better assessment. And so this, is, this includes maths, and I was really pleased to see the example of the Epsilon Delta definition in the previous one. That's something where we have somebody who's going to try and use stack for uh, measure theory. Um, and uh, we have somebody else, again, related to the course who's using um, uh, stack on applied mathematics and modeling and things like this. So again, the sort of things that we were seeing with the, um, uh, in the last talk are exactly relevant and to, the, to the work where our colleagues in uh, Kenya in particular, but also Ethiopia, um, Ghana, uh, Tanzania, Uganda um, and Rwanda are trying to take up some of these ideas with the caveat that because of their context, they, you know, they're teaching classes of thousands of students sometimes um, with no TAs, um, three lecture courses a semester, so, you know, and so just in impossible circumstances. And so we're providing some of the background and support which enables them to sort of do this. Um, and so that's the broader picture of this message. Santiago, I'll hand back to you. For, um, yeah, thank you, David. Uh, so, as uh, David suggested uh, in, the, in, in the biggest presentation, uh, we uh, believe quite strongly that you know technology can be used uh, to enhance instruction. But what at the core of what we do is uh, teaching through uh, formative uh, assessment. And at the heart of that is this triangle of uh, packages that interact with each other really nicely, um, which of course Miko demonstrated uh, quite well uh, in his workshop. And uh, it was also mentioned by Peck and, 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 and Tobias earlier on today. Um, so there's a, a clear interaction between Maxima and JSX Graph where, you know, you can use Maxima to, to feed into JSX Graph and then you can uh, use Stack to assess um, graphs or information gathered from graphs themselves using Maxima, of course. So the first uh, aspect of uh, what we what we do for this project is uh, related to the, the maxima in particular, uh, but it could be any other computer algebra system. So we're using um, maxima to generate meaningful data. We exploit the statistical distributions uh, built into maxima in order to generate data meaningfully to set uh, meaningful questions. And we then use the JSX graph integration to feed in that data and generate graphs and displays, um, including potentially um, interactive diagrams. Um, so we then use Stack as the assessment system for this. So we can analyze the student answers in different ways. We can, uh, it's been demonstrated uh, quite uh, thoroughly today how you know Stack can uh, assess student answers. Uh, and we believe that uh, there is the real potential to develop higher order skills uh, through these sort of uh, questions that could be uh, that could provide meaningful feed feedback, uh, recognizing mistakes, um, and also, uh, you know, lead to rather good understanding rather than, you know, here's the formula, 
it calculates uh, uh, the, as David was suggesting, the standard deviation. So uh, it helps understand what the standard deviation means rather than um, just following the formula and calculating it. Um, and uh, I have here a couple of questions uh, that we can demonstrate uh, from our uh, a selection of questions from the courses that we've run. Uh, so here, you know, estimating a standard deviation, for example, uh, the data is quite nicely displayed. Um, perhaps we should sort out the vertical uh, component of this, but uh, you can see here we have a, a empty horizontal space that is deliberate uh, because our target audience, Kenyan students, access this with a smartphone and one solution uh, that we found was to extend horizontally. We now found better solutions to do this, but um, without deviating too much, we have another question uh, on placing the mean and median. Uh, I'm sorry, the answers shouldn't be given <laughs> in the question itself. I forgot to remove them and we can check and get appropriate feedback um, about this. Uh, so you're a bit too far to the actual value. Your estimate is more than 20% away. So we use stack. We use Maxima to generate the data. We use JSX graph to uh, get the students in, engaging with the data and then provide use stack to provide the feedback um, to the students that we believe leads to higher order learning. Um, and uh, from a technical perspective, uh, you know, it was quite thoroughly uh, presented already today. Uh, there's a huge breadth of uh, possibilities uh, when using Stack and JSX Graph combined together. Um, and we have three more uh, examples that we can uh, quickly demonstrate. Uh, so uh, we have multiple choice question where students have to um, analyze the distribution of uh, the graph that again is uh, generated through uh, Maxima and the combination of Maxima and JSX graph. Um, we have as well um, a sort of matching exercise where we have four different types of distributions and the uh, respective box plots and students have to match what, uh, the, the relevant uh, graphs. And finally, the last example that we have is another dynamic uh, example, very similar to what uh, Vigand was showing just, uh, we have a histogram uh, and uh, students would have to uh, adapt the uh, box plot to, uh, to see whether uh, they can understand the data. So I did this uh, correct. Uh, let me do this incorrectly now, just to demonstrate the type of feedback that we can, that we're giving in our questions. Uh, so uh, now it's a different distribution. I'm going to purposefully answer this incorrectly. Uh, hopefully that's incorrect enough. And there we go, exactly what I was hoping for. So. Uh, your estimate for the lower quartile is not close enough to a correct estimate. Your estimate is too low, too small. The median is correct. Your estimate for the upper quartile is almost close enough, but it's a bit too large. Um, so uh, really at the heart of what we're doing is this combination of uh, the three components, the computer algebra, the graphing tool, and the assessment tool, which are Stack, Maxima, and JSX Graph. Uh, and it was 
quite time consuming to generate all these graphs. Uh, this one in particular to generate uh, the, the, the different graphs and make sure that everything is displayed correctly. So I'm gonna pass on to David uh, back um, to uh, present uh, a bit more of an academic idea of how this could be achieved in a much better or efficient way. Given, given time constraints, I won't spend long on this, but um, one of the things which, of course, um, as soon as you're starting to think about this statistically, um, the big advance that was made a number of years ago is the grammar of graphics. And um, Hadley Wickham, who's quite well known now, um, his PhD all, those, all these years ago was actually implementing the grammar of graphics for R. And one of the things which would be, of course, very interesting is to get a sort of JSX graph sort of implementation of the grammar of graphics, which would mean that we could be taking in and producing these plots in a way which would be consistent with a uh, sort of grammar of graphics. And, and there's a, a number of reasons why that, that sort of thing would be very um, interesting if there was sort of interest in pursuing this. It would be a substantial piece of work for someone to take on. It would be of the order of magnitude of a PhD, um, a sort of thesis to actually get something which could work really well. But I think it's something which could be then very reusable um, across a number of different applications. And so just like you have your sort of packages in Maxima, which correspond to statistical distributions, having a package within the JSX graph, which corresponds to, uh, you know, an implementation of the realm of graphics for statistical displays would be really incredibly powerful. And, and I think that's something where I don't know whether there is an interest for that or an appetite for something like this, but it's certainly something we'd be interested in collaborating on if there were people who were interested in getting involved. Anyway, I will let you move on as we don't, we're just, we're almost out of time. So um, moving, moving ahead or looking ahead, uh, we are very interested, as David was saying, uh, in collaborations uh, of all sorts of kinds with uh, different stakeholders or, or, or participants of different kinds. Um, we strongly believe uh, about uh, on that assessment uh, and well uh, crafted assessment can lead to higher learning, higher order learning. So uh, there's a quite a wide range uh, of applications or contexts where we could uh, incorporate these sort of assessment mechanisms. Um, Igor was showing yesterday uh, the electronic books, for example. Uh, those have multiple choice or simple assessment questions. What if we could incorporate some of these type of questions into those books? Uh, there are, of course, online courses uh, or online platforms that uh, complement courses. Um, we're even looking at the possibility of apps, uh, the, uh, developing apps or uh, implementing in other technologies. And we would be very keen to collaborate uh, with uh, different groups uh, on these sort of uh, incorporations, uh, not just in statistics, but beyond. Uh, I mean, um, uh, Vegan just showed loads of different areas. Uh, Simon's yesterday epidemiology, you know, uh, models. Um, and uh, Tobias uh, mentioning, you know, the questions we are developing, not just for statistics, but elsewhere, uh, could, we're hoping that they could be reusable in other contexts as well. Um, so we are uh, developing an open question bank, and we know that there are others doing similar things. And uh, we really believe in open source and sharing. Um, and uh, we have a, a way of sharing at the moment, which is through Moodle question banks, but that's quite cumbersome. And we're looking at the possibility of uh, sharing question banks through GitHub. And we know, again, that's a big job. And we would very much appreciate collaborations uh, on those aspects. Um, maybe, maybe can I just say one thing about the, sort of the GitHub aspect of this? Um, one of the things we're very conscious of for the groups that we work with is versioning. 
and version control of questions in different ways and being able to sort of provide people with updated versions as they go from one semester to the other. We know that the questions we're creating often needed to create be created quite urgently. They can often be improved and we, they need to go through multiple versions and we need to be able to put them in from one to another, which is why using a version control system like GitHub to manage the questions themselves is going to be really important. And, and I think there is some work which um, Chris and others, uh, Chris Angwin and others in staff are considering with sort of YAML versions of questions. But I, I and that would of course be wonderful then for a GitHub uh, sharing, but I think there are other options as well. So I think it's something we're just open for discussions, we're keen to hear what other people are interested in. 